Hi everyone, today I'd like to go through the mechanism of an acetal formation reaction, starting with a carbonyl, say a ketone or an aldehyde, to form a dimethyl acetal. If you enjoyed the video, please do hit the like button. Okay, so this is the reaction scheme I'd like to talk through today. I'm going to start off with a carbonyl compound on the left hand side, so that could be a ketone or an aldehyde, and I'm going to form the dimethyl acetal on the right hand side. So an acetal is a functional group where you have an sp3 carbon and two oxygens attached to it. The functional group is actually quite common in nature, but can also be used strategically in synthesis. And this is a dimethyl acetal because there are two methyl groups attached to the remaining oxygens. So one thing we can notice is that there's an extra oxygen in the product that wasn't there in the starting material, and there's two extra methyl groups. And both of those will come in by using methanol as a reagent. So in fact, we'd need at least two equivalents of that methanol. But importantly, we also need an H plus catalyst for this reaction. So any type of acid that won't interfere with the reaction, this is to lower the activation energy of the first step and to facilitate some groups leaving later on. So to get started, I note that my carbonyl compound is a classic electrophile at the, at the carbon. And therefore the methanol is playing the role of the nucleophile in this reaction. However, those oxygen lone pairs are in quite a low energy orbital and are not particularly nucleophilic and are not normally reactive enough to attack a carbonyl group. In fact, one way that we can normally make the oxygen more reactive as a nucleophile is to deprotonate the hydrogen and generate a methoxide ion. But the problem with generating a methoxide ion in the presence of a carbonyl compound is that you risk formation of the enolate in the reaction mixture as well, and a whole load of extra reactions that we don't want to happen. Okay, so this is why I need my catalyst, and the H plus will be the most electrophilic species in the mixture. Now this protonation of the carbonyl will be reversible and generate the activated system. So by adding this plus onto the substrate, I make it both more electrophilic, just in a kinetic sense, but I also lower the LUMO energy, so that's the CO pi star. Now it's possible for the methanol to attack that. And that will form the product at the bottom here. But I also notice that I could easily just kick that methanol back out again. So this is yet another reversible step. However, there is an alternative reaction that can occur now. I've generated an acidic proton, and that can easily be transferred to another methanol molecule. But then at the same time, the hydroxyl group has a lone pair, and that could pick up the proton after it's transferred. So essentially using another molecule that's floating around in the reaction, I can switch my protons over, and that will generate this species with the hydrogen on the left hand side instead. I notice that this is a good leaving group, so that might be able to fall off. And in fact, keeping an eye on what I need to do for the whole reaction, at some point I need to substitute that water molecule for another OME at the top. So some sort of substitution reaction needs to happen here, and that can only really go via either SN1 or SN2 type mechanisms. So having a look at my substrate at the bottom, well, if I went by SN1, I'd leave a carbocation behind on this central carbon. In fact, it would be a pretty stable carbocation because it's a tertiary center, but even better, there's a lone pair nearby to stabilize it. However, trying to do some sort of SN2 reaction here is not very favorable because that's a very hindered approach, trying to get into that sigma star on essentially a tertiary center. Well, that's never going to happen just for steric hindrance reasons, so substitution reaction must go via SN1. So with that water leaving group going, I can stabilize the carbocation that remains using the other oxygen's lone pair. Now this step is also reversible to generate a species that looks like this, an oxycarbenium ion. And we note that that's got the similar properties as before. This is like an activated carbonyl group. So as in the earlier step, this is a good electrophile. Now we see that that reaction is reversible because I could just use some water and attack back in again. But there is an alternative and another methanol molecule could find this substrate instead and do the same type of nucleophilic attack onto that carbonyl group. So this is the second step of the SN1 type process. And that will give me this substrate which has just got a spare proton on it compared to the product, but that's okay because we can just remove that using another molecule of methanol. Now that loss of a proton will always be reversible as well. So overall we can see that this process is catalytic in acid. In the very very first step I added a proton, down the bottom here I transferred a proton, and at the end we lost the proton again. So there's no overall H plus ending up in our molecule. So we note that this is an equilibrium process, but also we'd expect it to be under thermodynamic control. So if we're wanting to form the dimethyl acetal as our desired product, we need to check that there's a driving force for this by using our normal thermodynamics equation relating the enthalpy and the entropy changes. And we notice that there's a bit of a problem here. So just think about the enthalpy term first. Well, we've lost a strong carbonyl bond 
And although the CO sigma bond is going to be reasonably strong, I'm not massively convinced that the enthalpy change will be in our favour here for going from the left to the right. But it's even worse for us if we think about the entropy changes. On the left-hand side of this system, there is two methanol molecules. But keeping track of what was in the reaction, well, there was one water molecule that came out here. So there's one water molecule as our product. So overall, going from the left to the right, we're going from three molecules down to two. So there's a decrease in entropy in this solution. So left to its own devices, the position of equilibrium will lie to the starting materials, not the products. Now, this is a situation commonly encountered in organic chemistry, so we just need to stack the deck in our favour a little bit. And basically, we need to give it a good reason to not just be a full equilibrium here. Now, a very quick way of doing this, depending on your experimental setup, would be to just remove the water. And that might be able to be done by using a drying agent, for example. We have to be a bit careful here trying to use distillation or something to remove that water because the methanol will have a lower boiling point and so risks driving the reaction the way you don't want it to go. If we remove the water at that stage, that essentially means the step down the bottom here will become irreversible and so we'll filter towards the acetal product. But actually there's another way that we could do this. It might just be a bit easier to do in the lab and that's to also focus on this step where there's essentially a competition reaction between the water being a nucleophile and the methanol. So a very easy way to make the methanol win in that competition reaction would just be to put it into large excess. And if the acetal is the dimethyl one that we're trying to form, we could just use methanol as the solvent instead. And then it will be in massive excess relative to the water that's liberated. So every time there's a choice, the methanol will react in preference. As a final point, I'll just note that those changes to the reaction conditions are completely in line with Le Chatelier's principle. So if I were to increase the amount of methanol in the reaction, we'd expect the position of equilibrium to shift to the right. And if I were to remove the water product from here, we'd also expect the position of equilibrium to move to the right. OK, that's me done on this mechanism. Do keep an eye on my channel if you want to see more content along these lines. And if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like.